Humans and demons have been at war for 15 years. Humans entered their realm through a special gate connecting the two worlds, while demons have now taken strategic positions in the human realm. A single hero and his party venture forth to the demon realm to slay the demon king. The hero goes on ahead, leaving his party behind to fight the demon king and end the war once and for all. But upon arrival, he finds the castle void of life. Well, all except for a single woman claiming to be the demon king. The hero believes it's a trick, but she's dead serious. She wishes to end the war, but since both sides rely on it, she'll need his help. He doesn't believe her, but she explains how the central nations provide food to the north, who can't grow their own, and the south prospers from all the trade and funds sent for the war effort. Then, in return, they provide security for the central nations. She hands Hero a lamp that shows people's memories, and shows him how the central nations live without worry. If either side wins, they'll subjugate the other into slavery, and eventually destroy themselves through civil war. Why else would they send a small group of four to dispatch with the Demon King, if not for them to fail? She uses the lamp to show him a hill that stands between the colonized world and the frontier. She wants to know what lies beyond it. She explains that ancient records speak of a hero and demon king splitting the world in two. Again, she asks him to become hers and swears to become his. They can work together in the shadows to alter the course of history and end the war on their terms. She values contracts above all else. They pledge themselves to each other. When she goes to hug him, she accidentally touches the lamp and embarrasses herself by showing him a memory of her getting ready for his arrival. To his surprise, she then takes off her horns. Apparently, they're just for show. They use the gate and travel to the human realm. The Demon King chose a smaller village where their identity would remain a secret and allow them to experiment with new ways of doing things, like agriculture and trade. The head maid, who has always been by the king's side, greets them and congratulates them on their marriage. They head to the edge of the village, where she explains how the farmers rotate the crops to keep the land fertile, but she's come up with a more efficient way to ensure the village has food year-round. She still has to convince the village elders, however. While they sit by the fire, having an awkward attempt at an intimate encounter as they adjust to their new arrangements, they hear a commotion in the stables. They find two girls dressed in rags. Head maid refers to them as slaves. But the demon king corrects her. They're serfs and are allowed to own property and have families, but not much else. The head maid calls them insects. Those who can't take charge of their own fate don't have the right to call themselves human. Hero objects to throwing them out, and the demon king tells the head maid to feed and clothe them, after which she still cuts them down for begging on their knees to make them human. The head maid teaches them how to properly bow while requesting help, and agrees to train them as maids. Everyone likes maids. They begin an education under the scholar, along with the children of nobles. Hero wonders about his usefulness. Why is he even around if he's only good with a sword? They discuss possible ways in which the war could end, but the kids are still naive and don't know what it's like to live in poverty. Though, teaching the children of nobles has gained her political sway, and with her secret weapon, the Demon King is confident they can begin to change the world. After three months, the farming experiment is going well, and the villagers begin to warm up to Hero and the Demon King. The two teleport to speak with the Lakeside Convent, a church dedicated to the Spirit of Light that oversees the general education of the populace, an ideal tool for influencing the masses. The Demon King introduces herself as the Crimson Scholar, while Hero goes by the White Swordsman. But the nun is one of Hero's old companions. He's surprised when she recognizes him, referring to her as Female Knight. The Crimson Scholar explains how Hero fought the Demon King, and they were both gravely wounded, so she took him in while he healed, and he stayed to become her bodyguard. Female Knight berates him for running off on his own, and explains that the old man is now working for the Winter King, but the mage went after him to the Demon Realm. Asking for the convent's aid, the Crimson Scholar reveals her secret weapon, the potato. If the church could spread the crop through the land, it could almost eliminate famine. In exchange, she requests that they build a convent in Winter's Pass and teach agricultural methods while also building convents in the surrounding area. Knight says she will come to Winter's Pass herself and run the convent. 
Now that they can spread education, they need a way to transport and trade goods. The Merchant Alliance in the southern region has enough wealth to topple nations. So the Crimson Scholar makes a dry compass to use on ships and sends it to them. The Alliance decides to capitalize on this new invention, but they wonder if she sold it to anyone else. They plan to pay Winter's Pass a visit to meet the Scholar in person. Hero packs a bag, intending to go and save the mage when the Demon King catches him trying to sneak out in the middle of the night. So, she gives him a suit of armor to hide his identity and sends him to the Demon Realm to act as her enforcer while she's away from the throne. After receiving a letter from the Merchant Alliance, the Crimson Scholar prepares for their meeting. Female Knight begins teaching the noble's children how to handle a blade while the convent is being built. Both sides prepare for the worst. The Alliance brings assassins, while the Head Maid fills the surrounding forest with ghost knights in case the deal goes south. The Crimson Scholar reveals another new crop, corn. It has the potential to surpass their entire business as it is. She isn't selling a product, but an idea. The Crimson Scholar uses the merchant's greed to her advantage. They don't really care about the war. To them, money comes before everything. Young Merchant bursts out laughing and sends the signal for the men to back off. They have a deal. He's so impressed that he asks for her hand in marriage. She's flustered and tries to refuse, but he won't give up, saying that they'll meet again. Hero has been making headway in the Demon Realm. Unbeknownst to the Demon King, he's been regularly teleporting back to the mansion to leave letters while Head Maid covers for him. The Central Nations declare that the only territory in the Human Realm under the Demon's control, Aurora Island, must be retaken. The Southern Nations prepare to set sail. The Winter King leads the fleet to meet the White Knight King when they are attacked by a giant squid, and they almost lose the entire fleet. The Prince takes on his father's role as King and cuts ties with the White Knight King, proclaiming that they'll retake Aurora Island themselves. Back at the mansion, the Demon King reveals her true identity to Female Knight, but instead of the reaction she expected, Female Knight forgives her for lying. It's not a sin to be the Demon King. That and Hero already confessed. It's been a year since Hero left, and the Demon King is growing weary. She wonders aloud about his whereabouts. When he answers from the bedside, she immediately tears into him after the initial shock wears off. He promises to reclaim Gateway City within a month and be back in time for the assault on Aurora Island. The new Winter King gathers forces preparing for their next assault, and Female Knight joins them as a temporary commander. Hero terrorizes the human population in Gateway City as the Black Knight with the help of illusions made by the fairies and uses Nightmare Thrush to give them unending nightmares. The soldiers begin requesting to go home. The Crimson Scholar shows up to meet the Winter King in person, who thanks her for all her help. Taking back the island will open trade routes and help lessen their dependence on the Central Nations. Pleased with this answer, she gives them a way to create a bridge of ice using salt since the soldiers are too vulnerable on the water. They successfully push the demons back, but now their leader is forcing the humans to lay siege. But without more manpower, they have no chance to take the keep. But the Crimson Scholar isn't done with her plan. An army approaches from the south. Though it isn't demons, they're the soldiers leaving Gateway City. The commander defected under the guise of sending reinforcements. The city's new commander proclaims that Gateway City will be a haven for both humans and demons alike. The Arctic General joins his forces and pushes back the humans, while Female Knight answers the challenge and defeats him single-handedly. Merchant Youngster, one of the Crimson Scholar's pupils, is sent to aid the Winter King. Hero meets with the Council in Gateway City the following day as the Black Knight. They are throwing a festival to try and bring the human and demon populations together. Hero speaks with the human commander when he's suddenly confronted by the Fire Dragon Princess. She wishes to marry him and won't take no for an answer. The commander who deserted the fight in the Battle of Aurora Island is judged by the church and sentenced to death. The Demon King brings Hero and the older sister maid to the Iron Kingdom, where she reveals her newest innovation, the printing press. Female Knight and the Demon King run into each other outside of Hero's room and argue over who gets to sleep in his bed. 
They both end up sleeping in his bed, but Hero is too exhausted to deal with them and pretends to be sleeping. The Demon King tells Female Knight she must go back to the Demon Realm to renew her rule through a special ritual, so she must protect him while she's away. Before the Demon King leaves, she gives the older sister maid a ring that makes anyone who wears it look like her, in case anyone needs to see the Crimson Scholar in person or wonders about her absence. The White Knight King frees the commander before he's executed, and they plot to destroy the Winter King and any hope of peace in Gateway City. Young Merchant visits the mansion to meet with the Crimson Scholar, but he sees through older sister maid's disguise while she wears the ring. Hero steps in and decides to take him to the Demon Realm to show him Gateway City and the potential of humans and demons living together and what that would mean for the Merchant Alliance. The Demon King visits the mage in the outer library before entering the ritual chamber and tells the head maid that if she comes out a different person, but the head maid interrupts and promises to slay her where she stands. Female knight pledges her sword to Hero, who then knights her. Since she can't have the same relationship that he and the Demon King have, this is the only way for her to swear her loyalty to him. A representative from the church visits the Winter King and declares the Crimson Scholar a heretic, since the potato is a demon crop. The Old Man and the Winter King go to Winter's Pass to discuss a game plan. Hero asks Older Sister Maid to let herself get arrested while wearing the ring. If anything goes wrong, he'll save her. Older Sister Maid gets ready to face the crowd, feeling powerless and afraid. The messenger is met by the Winter King, who hands over Older Sister Maid as promised. She's immediately flogged, and the crowd wonders why the church would do such a thing, and if she really is a heretic. Older Sister Maid decides to speak up and relays the story of her childhood as a serf and how she, along with her sister, were taken in and shown kindness. Despite doubting herself, she gives a passionate speech about her difficulties becoming a human. What makes someone human is the freedom to choose and truly believe in yourself, not simply follow orders blindly. The messenger is having none of it and tells the crowd to stone her, but if they do, they relinquish their right to choose and their humanity. In the words of the head maid, she pleads with the crowd to not become insects. The crowd turns on the church and begins throwing stones at the messenger. The Winter King stops the executioner and declares that they will not kneel to the church, and Female Knight proclaims the Crimson Scholar a saint to the crowd's relief. Instead of being mad that older sister maid didn't wait for him, Hero commends her on her speech. Now, the Winter King has basically declared war on the church and the Central Nations, so he meets with his council and they decide to free the serfs. If they are going against the Central Nations, they need to become independent and rely on their own citizens. In retaliation to the church's actions, the Lakeside Convent decides to build their own church with their own teachings and break ties with the Central Church. The Southern Nations join together in defiance and encourage immigration with lower taxes and the end of serfdom. They decide to use the Bard Guild to spread the promise of a better life instead of trying to convert people. Young Merchant begins buying wheat and issuing contracts to buy the next harvest at a fixed price. The price of food begins to increase at an alarming rate, as per his plans. The South puts trade tariffs in place on imports and exports fearing they might run out of food. The Fire Dragon Princess goes to meet with Young Merchant to broker a deal to buy as much salt as they can acquire, since it's important in the Demon Realm, but not as prized by the humans. The Central Church sends a letter of excommunication in response to the tariffs, but Hero says it's too soon, they're still waiting for the Demon King to return. Hero asks the Winter King to avoid casualties on both sides for as long as he can, now that war has been declared on the south. Young Merchant and Fire Dragon Princess receive news that the church supports Central in issuing a new currency to combat inflation. Meanwhile, the White Knight King plans a surprise attack on the Iron Kingdom for tempting the serfs in his kingdom with freedom, leaving his country without a workforce. While the Winter King and Hero plan their strategy, a messenger bursts through the door, alerting them to an army of demons marching from the south. Hero decides to fight the demons himself in order to avoid fighting a war on two fronts. 
Merchant Youngster figures out Young Merchant's plans while meeting with him and Fire Dragon Princess. They make a deal to set up banks in the Southern Nations, establishing a dual currency system and extending trade into the Demon Realm. Hero discovers that it's the Blue Demon Clan marching from the South, where he is surprised by a female magician who goes into a frenzy, taking out the entire army with a single spell. She tells Hero to destroy the gate connecting the two worlds and to fly downwards into the Pillar of Smoke. The Demon King emerges from the chamber, but is possessed by the previous Demon Kings, bent on destruction. Headmaid attempts to stop her, but is completely powerless as the Demon King severs her arm with a single blow. The forces guarding the border spot the White Knight King's men approaching on horseback. They don't have enough men to fight them head on, so they devise a strategy to split the enemy forces and pick them off with crossbows. The enemy commander falls into their trap, telling his forces to use their mobility and speed to spread out. This only isolates them and plays right into the defending commander's hands. Hero is shocked to find that the demon realm is beneath the human realm. The two aren't separate, they're connected. He speeds towards the Demon King's castle. Despite the headmaid's attempt to trap her in the chamber, Hero flies in and breaks through the door. The Demon King greets Hero innocently, but headmaid warns him just in time to stop her scythe from cutting him in two. Female magician delivers a message the Crimson Scholar gave her in the outer library, the instructions to cure smallpox in a bid to make peace, and that the Crimson Scholar has actually been a demon this whole time. Hero attempts to remind the Demon King of their promise as they face off. He eventually convinces her to break free, and she dispels the previous Demon Kings possessing her body. The commander who defected in Gateway City finds older and younger sister maid, believing she's the Crimson Scholar. But another disciple of the Crimson Scholar, Warrior Youngster, steps in to save them. The two clash swords, and they fall down an elevator shaft. To their surprise, the sisters rush to find him, only to discover that the commander is dead at the bottom. To their relief, Warrior Youngster calls out from within the shaft. A group of mercenaries grows tired of Central Command and decides to attack the Southern Army camp, where Female Knight catches them off guard, defeating them with hit-and-run tactics. The reinforcements the South has been waiting for arrive in the form of Snowfall, forcing the Central Army to retreat. In the Central Nations, it turns out the leaders have been plotting with the Blue Demons, along with the Church. They are the real conspirators responsible for the war. Now, they plan a new crusade against the South, but this time, they have the upper hand. They stole designs to build firearms from the Crimson Scholar. In the Demon Realm, the Demon King addresses her subjects, proclaiming she is alive and well and that Gateway City has been reclaimed. She presents Hero, the Black Knight, as her loyal sword and general. But when he steps out, nobody is impressed with his lackluster display. That is, until he uses his true power and blows up a mountain peak. Despite all of the trade alliances and headway they've made in the human realm, the demons are ready for an all-out war with the humans, to the demon king's dismay. Hero assures her, there is still a lot of work to do, but hope isn't lost. They can still end the war once and for all. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.